Shall I compare thee to a summer's day, thou art more lovely and more temperate? Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, on summer's lease hath all too short a day. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal line to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this and this gives life to thee. The Shakespearean sonnet has the rhyme scheme A B A B C D C D E F E F G G forming three quatrains which is four lines in a group and the closing couplet which is two rhymed lines. The problem is usually developed in the first three quatrains, each quatrain with a new idea growing out of the previous one. The title of a poem usually has another meaning and it has a huge impact on the poem and the meaning of the poem. But in this poem, Sonnet 18, the title has no significance as it's just stating the number of the poem in, in William Shakespeare's collection and of sonnets. Poem Sonnet 18 might not be straightforward for everyone, so I will go ahead and paraphrase it for you. Shall I compare you to a summer's day? You are more lovely and more constant. Rough winds shake the beloved buds of May, and summer is far too short. At times the sun is too hot, or often goes behind the clouds. And everything beautiful sometimes will lose its beauty by misfortune or by nature's plan out of course. But your youth shall not fade, nor will you lose the beauty that you possess, nor will death claim you for his own, because in my eternal verse you will live forever. So uh, long as there are people on the this earth so long will this poem live on making you immortal so this is the paraphrased way of saying the poem sonnet 18 in william shakespeare's poem sonnet 18 he starts by asking a question is, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? In this question, he proceeds to compare his beloved to a summer's day. You can see how his attitude is, shows his affection and his love towards his loved one. And you can see the shift when, when he says, but the but thy eternal summer shall not fade, because in the lines before, he was talking about how everything fades and everything ends. Then he says, then he sh in the, in this certain line there's a shift, because he says, but thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of the, that fair thou owest. There he he is declining what he said in the beginning. And he's, sh he's, sh he's showing us how he loves his, his beloved one so much and that this entire poem is for his loved one.
The theme in Sonnet 18 is pretty straightforward and it's love, but there's a little twist. It's not like the usual love poems because Sonnet 18 opens up as if it's a, a traditional love poem, by, but, but by the end we can see that it's much more than a traditional love poem because the poet is much more into himself and, and in the poetry than his beloved one and in fact at times it seems like he might actually give himself recognition and instead of his beloved so I believe if it's a love poem it's a love poem for the poet not the, his beloved one In the poem Sonnet 18 we have figurative language. First of all in line 1, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? It's a metaphor and this metaphor goes throughout the whole poem and Shakespeare goes to show how much like lovely, lovelier his beloved is than the comparison really shows. The second metaphor we have in the poem is in line 9, but thy eternal summer shall not fade. This metaphor suggests that his beloved will always be young to him, that she has a glow that is everlasting. Then we move on to symbolism. Throughout the whole poem, summer is being used as a symbol of youth. We also have the eye of heaven, which symbolizes the sun. Then finally we have personification. Shakespeare personifies death by claiming that he will never claim his lover, that they will never die but live in his heart. Then he gives life to uh, through her, through the poem, and claiming she will remain immortal forever. The figurative language helps give meaning to the poem and helps the writer make the reader understand what is being said. In poems, we have both literal and figurative meanings. Literal meanings are understood by reading and understanding the poem, but figurative meanings are understood by analyzing the poem and understanding the background of the, uh, of the author and poet. In Sonnet 18, the literal meaning is a, a, is a comparison between a man's beloved and and the na and nature and the summer day and the beautiful things in the world, but when we go in depth, we find that the figurative meaning of the poem is not about a woman, or it's actually about the the po William Shakespeare's writing and the uh, beautiful poems and sonnets, and he says that he no matter what happens and when he dies that his, all his beautiful uh, poems and writings shall not die, they shall last forever and as long as man lives, his legacy will live.